Hi and welcome to the Thought for the Week with Chabad in Wimbledon. Have you ever wondered, where is the source of praying with a minion? Jews all over the world and for thousands of years have prayed with a quorum with ten men over the age of bar mitzvah in shul. And then when you get together, you can say Kaddish, you can say the repetition of the Amida, you can read the Torah. There's lots of things that you can do if you have a minion. But where is the source of having a minion? Where do we get it from? The truth is, it's in this week's Torah portion, which is in the parsha of Shalach. In this week's parsha, we have the story of Moses sending spies to the land of Israel to see if it was possible to conquer it. And 10 of those spies came back with a negative report. It was only Joshua, Yehoshua, and Kalev that came back with positive reports. And the Torah, in its description of this number of spies, says the following words. Ad Mosai lo Eida hara hazais. Until when will this evil congregation rebel against God? So the ten spies who came and gave a negative report, and <clears throat> they are called an Ada, a congregation. And from here the Talmud learns that if you have ten men above the age of bar mitzvah, they constitute a minion. And although every individual, both man and woman, is obligated to pray on a daily basis, nevertheless, if we want to pray communally, then the nucleus that creates that quorum is the number ten. And we get it from the fact that the ten spies were called an Ada, were called a congregation. What is most surprising is that how come we learn the concept of a minion specifically from a group of people who were sinners, people who came such and gave such a negative report about the land. There's another conundrum over here. In the beginning of the parasha, we find that Moses prays on behalf of Joshua. His name, Hoshea bin Nun, is changed to Yehoshua, an extra yud being added at the beginning of the name. And this extra yud, together with the first letter of his name, the He, stands for yud He. yud He is God's name. And as Rashi says, the Moshe prayed, May God save you from the advice and counsel of the spies. So did Moses know that the spies would come and give an evil report? On the one hand, it says, They were all kosher when he sent them out. And yet, when they came back, they gave such a negative report. So why did Moshe only pray for Yehoshua and not for the other spies? And at the end of the day, what the spies wanted, which was to remain in the desert, transpired. The people wandered around the desert for the next 39 years. It was only when that generation had perished and expired, the next generation entered the land. What is the meaning of all this? The Alter Rebbe, Rabbi Shneer Zalman, the founder of Chabad, explains in his work, Likut Torah, a beautiful explanation. And it goes like this. He says that, in fact, these spies were great tzaddikim. They were righteous, very holy men. And when they saw the land, what they saw was that the people of Israel would have to enter into a different realm of existence, until now, they had lived in the desert, and everything was supernatural. The manna had fallen from heaven. The water had been provided from the well of Miriam. It even says that the clouds of glory ironed and shined their clothing to make them feel fresh. And so, 
Their daily food and sustenance and clothing was all provided from above. All they had to do was to live on a spiritual plateau. And when they went into the land, that would all be left behind. They would have to enter into a world of commerce, a world of agriculture, a world of sowing and planting and seeding, and a world in which they would have to work hard in the material world to reap the benefits. And that the spies didn't want. They wanted to remain in that spiritual world. And so they gave a negative report of the land. They said, why should we go in there? Let us stay here in the desert. Let us stay in this spiritual oasis. And this gives us a clue as to why the concept of a minion of the Quorum of Ten should be learned specifically from the spies. Although their intent was incorrect, nevertheless, if we have a look at what a minion is, it's somewhat parallel. As we get up in the morning, before we go out to the world of commerce, we spend time together in a spiritual oasis. We detach ourselves from the world and we enter into the world of spirituality, a world where we connect our soul to God. We try to elevate ourselves, and we pray and we beseech the Almighty for a success in all our endeavors. And so that quorum, that minion, is something like what the spies wanted to achieve. And hence the concept of a minion is learned from them. And that's why Moses prayed for Joshua specifically, and not for the rest of them. Moses knew that they were kosher, but he had a suspicion that this is the type of report they may come back with because they didn't want to live in the material existence. Moses knew that Joshua would lead the people into the land, and therefore he specifically didn't want him to be deceived in this notion. Maimonides, in his Laws of Teshuva, says there are three levels of service of God. One is to serve out of fear because one is afraid what will happen if one doesn't keep the commandments. This is called, in Hebrew, yirat ha'onesh, fear of punishment, fear of the consequence. This, says Maimonides, is a very basic level of service. A much higher level of service is oved mi ahava, Somebody who serves God out of love, out of a desire to cleave to God and to leave any material pursuit. But that is not the ultimate level in service. The ultimate level is that he serves God <clears throat> because what God has asked is true, not for any gain not material, and not even spiritual. But one serves God completely because one is nullified to the Almighty's will. And this is the difference between the spies and the people who entered the land. The spies were looking for some sort of spiritual ecstasy, and they sought it in the desert. Ultimately, that was somewhat selfish. Joshua and those who enter the land understood that what one must one do, what one must do in actuality, is to put oneself aside and to focus only on what the Almighty wants. He wants to have an abode in the material world, and that would only be achieved by entry into the land. And so although the spies got it wrong, Nevertheless, we do enter into the minion, the quorum, the synagogue on a daily basis, three times a day, shacharit, minchav, arvit, in the morning, afternoon, and the evening prayers, where we do detach ourselves from the mundane and enter into the words of prayer. But ultimately, we must know that that spirituality cannot be left in the oasis, but it must be brought down into the world of commerce, into the mundane, so that all our acts are for the sake of heaven, and in all ways may we know him. Shabbat Shalom.